Tonight we are two days away from the start of early voting in North Carolina. As people get ready to head to the polls, health officials are warning about worsening COVID-19 trends. News 13's Caitlin Penner spoke with election officials today about what they're doing to keep voters safe. All right, so election and health officials both say that when early voting starts this Thursday, they will be following CDC and the State Board of Elections protocols. More than 1,000 absentee ballots were counted Tuesday as Henderson County election officials look to Thursday when voters show up to vote early. All the poll workers will be in masks. Some may wear shields. When you use the machine, as soon as you leave the machine, we will sort of disinfect the machine. The voters will be given a sterile Q-tip to touch the machine so it marks their ballot for them. North Carolina is starting its early voting as surrounding states like Georgia struggle with long lines. And North Carolina health officials said Tuesday they're concerned about worsening COVID-19 trends. I would expect a, a small wait, but not a, nothing like you saw in Georgia the other night. Henderson County Election Board Chairman Charles Med says around 25 people will be allowed inside their headquarters polling site. He says they have extra machines this year. He adds there will be hand sanitizer and monitors who will enforce social distancing and feeling pretty good with our masks, social distancing. Uh, I'm not worried. People volunteering at the polls that we spoke with say they're comfortable with being there. I will be wearing a mask and a shield to protect them. So I am certainly hopeful that they will wear a mask and mask to protect me. As they finish setting up the polling sites, Med says they are doing everything they can to be safe. I just like to let the voters of Henderson County know that they will have a very safe, healthy, election. And Buncombe County health officials echoed a lot of what Henderson County officials said today, adding though that they're not going to be giving out stickers and they're going to be using single use pens during the voting. New tonight, the city of Asheville is making some strides in addressing racial justice and economic inclusion. The initiative began shortly after the death of George Floyd to eliminate racial disparities in the city. Tonight, Asheville City Manager Deborah Campbell gave an update on the 30, 60, 90 day plan. News 13's Taylor Young joins us live from Asheville. And Taylor, a lot of changes have already been made across the city. Yeah, that's right. From projects that you can physically see, like the removal of Confederate monuments to things that are happening behind closed doors to close the opportunity gap. Months of protests across the country, sparking a push for local leaders to make changes in the criminal justice, education, and housing systems. It's a really good, good start. Asheville City Manager Deborah Campbell spearheading the 30-60-90 day plan, a response to concerns made by the city's African American community. Within the first 60 days, the city established the Vance Monument Task Force, initiated conversations about defunding the police, and partnered with city schools to address the opportunity gap. It's time for a change. Tuesday, Kadata Wynn gave an update on the Positive Opportunities Develop Success, or PODS. They include 11 remote learning sites serving primarily African American children at no cost. We've seen some dynamic change in our students' attitudes and our leaders' um, confidence. And we just no longer want our black and brown students to and families to make up this opportunity gap that's in the city of Asheville. Asheville City Schools is also collaborating with the Housing Authority to provide internet access to low-income families. The kids cannot function in the model that we have today unless they have access to the internet. The city hopes to raise enough money to cover the costs, estimated to be around $250,000 for all Housing Authority families to have free internet access and an additional $6,000 a month. What we're hoping is in the first phase, we're going to target all of our family units where there are school age children. And the city is looking at rebranding the 30, 60, 90 day plan since work is still underway. Good morning, I'm Katie Killen. Vice presidential nominee Kamala Harris will be in Asheville this week. The campaign says she will visit the area tomorrow. She is also making a stop in Charlotte to mark the first day of early voting across North Carolina. 
No other details have been released regarding a time or location just yet. As cases rise in Graham County, schools return to virtual learning. The district originally planned to send elementary schoolers back to in-person learning, but the Graham County Health Department reported a cluster of cases at Robbinsville Elementary. School officials and the Health Department then made the switch to remote learning October 6. The virtual schedule will last until at least October 27th. The McDowell County Sheriff's Office is investigating human remains that were found yesterday morning. They say a person located parts of a skeleton near Lavender Road. Investigators are recovering those remains, which will then be sent off for an autopsy and identification. Now here's Ingrid with your Skywatch forecast. And cooler out there compared to yesterday morning, so you might want a jacket. By this afternoon, a t-shirt. 75 degrees in Asheville and sunny skies. Here's a look at some changes. Uh, Thursday will slightly be above average. Friday, cooler. By this weekend, some cool days and some chilly nights. Here's your seven-day forecast showing the 30s by Saturday morning and again Sunday morning, upper 60s next week. This four-pound bucket of peanut butter can be yours. I'm Jay Siltzer. This is your morning cup of Jay. Fans of Reese's Peanut Butter Cups are rejoicing over this new product. Amazon just began selling real Reese's Peanut Butter Sauce. It's the same stuff you find inside the popular candy. The bulk product promises to be great for baking, toppings, marinades, and shakes. The jug weighs in at four and a half pounds and costs about 30 bucks. They might look unassuming, but these donuts pack a serious flavor punch. Duncan is launching an apparition-inspired treat today. It's called the Spicy Ghost Pepper Donut. The breakfast treat is topped with strawberry icing infused with hotness. If spicy and sweet are not your thing, then Duncan has a line of more traditional menu items for fall. One ramen fan will get the chance to fulfill his or her noodle dreams. Top Ramen is the industry leader when it comes to prepackaged Asian-inspired meals. The company is looking for a chief noodle officer. Interested candidates are instructed to post photos of their own ramen noodle creations. The winner will receive $10,000 and a 50-year supply of the product and the chance to help test new recipes. I'm out on all three of these. I, I, I don't even know what we're putting in Cup of J anymore. That is your morning Cup of J. Have a great day.